the service of evening prayer on page 243. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. No light, no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And illumine your church. Joyous light of glory. Ave immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of being praised with your voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host 
and may glorify you forever. Amen. We continue with the additional psalm, Psalm 77, in the front of the hymnal. We'll be singing verses 1 and 2, and 7 through 15, joined together with the Gloria Patri. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of trouble I seek the Lord. In the night my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. Will the Lord spurn forever? and never again be favorable. Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? Then I said I will appeal to this, to the ears of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder on your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God. You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You with your arm redeem your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We now sing hymn 730, What is the World to Me? Hymn 730. What is the world to me with all its wanted pleasure when you and you alone, Lord Jesus, are my treasure? You only, dearest Lord, my soul's delight shall be. You are my peace. Yet never is come. 
Isaiah, the 45th chapter, in its entirety. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes of secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know, from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. Let the earth cause them both to sprout. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe to him who strives with him who formed him, a pot among earthen pots. Does the clay say to him who forms it, What are you making? Or, Your work has no handles. Woe to him who says to a father, What are you begetting? Or to a woman, With what are you in labor? Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and the one who formed him, Ask me of things to come. Will you command me concerning my children and the work of my hands? I made the earth and created man on it. It was my hands that stretched out the heavens, and I commanded all their host. I have stirred him up in righteousness, and I will make all his ways level. He shall build my city and set my exiles free, not for price or reward, says the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord, The wealth of Egypt and the merchandise of Cush and the Sabaeans, men of stature, shall come over to you and be yours. They shall follow you. They shall come over in chains and bow down to you. They will plead with you, saying, Surely God is in you, and there is no other, no God besides him. Truly you are a God who hides himself, O God of Israel, the Savior. All of them are put to shame and confounded. The makers of idols go in confusion together. But Israel is saved by the Lord with everlasting salvation. You shall not be put to shame or confounded to all eternity. For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, he is God. Who formed the earth and made it, he established it. He did not create it empty. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I did not speak in secret in a land of darkness. I did not say to the offspring of Jacob, Seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. Assemble, yourself, assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together. Your survivors of the nations, they have no mind, knowledge who carry about their wooden idols and keep on praising to a God that cannot save. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? And there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone out in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me our righteousness and strength. To him shall come and be ashamed all who were incensed against him. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall be justified and shall glory. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of St. John, the 14th chapter and the 15th chapter. 
Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in, abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but, but now, now in these last days, days he, has he has spoken, spoken to, to us by his Son. Son. Dear friends in Christ, listeners of this video, which is really more of an audio recording. As we look at all that is going on in the world, it is difficult to see what else is happening. For many people are afraid and worried. Some people are just not taking it seriously at all. Some people may be taking it too seriously. But where is God's hand in all this, many may ask? Well, as we heard in the book of Isaiah, God is in control of all things. He has created the heavens and the earth, and he created man in righteousness. It is only because of man and woman and their failings and their sins that there is unrighteousness and that there is trouble on earth. And yet God sends it. He allows it to happen. We cannot pinpoint exactly and precisely why and say, well, it is specifically for this sin. But there is one sin that we can point to, and that is unbelief. And that is the unbelief of so many who have said that they were Christian, and yet they never really took God's word to heart. They took it for granted. There are many who maybe grew up in the church who no longer have gone to church for many years, and so their children, and perhaps even their children's children, have not even heard God's word. They have but a cultural Christianity. Perhaps God is, through this pestilence, to use the Old Testament way of speaking, this coronavirus, to try to repent the hearts of men and women the world over, so that they look for hope beyond just science and medicine, which God does use for help and healing, but maybe to look unto the Lord, and to look and see the unbelief that we have all grasped onto, our wooden idols of material goods, of government, of sports, of family, of things that we have taken so much for granted that now many of us are having to sit at home or just going to work and then home, occasionally getting out to Walmart or some other grocery store to get a few provisions here and there. Yes, the coronavirus is real. And yet at the same time, we should not look at it as something that stops us or ruins our faith 
or that causes us to give up hope. Instead, we should repent. We should confess our sins. We should say, Lord, have mercy upon us and have mercy upon all these others. Let this be an opportunity so that they may seek your face while it may be found. And your Lord, your face, O Lord, do I seek. And so in this way, let us turn and again remember the word that he has spoken to us, the word that he has given us in his baptism. In Jesus Christ, the word made flesh was crucified for our transgressions so that the fullness of God's wrath would not be upon us, but that we remember that his word is true. That word of truth is that he would send a Savior, that our God is a Savior. He is righteousness, and he is merciful to all the sons of Jacob and Israel, whom we are by faith, and the one through whom God provided even Jesus Christ. So let us abide in him, and abide in his word. Let us look forward to the time when we can, again in full number, receive Christ's body and blood as it strengthens us in that faith. In the meantime, let us continue to hear his word. Attend the video, uh, the video casts, the uh, small groups of individuals here and there with me as Pastor Kangas. But all through it, let us look forward. If Jesus Christ is the vine, we are the branches. And the fruit that it bears is not just good works, but the fruit that it bears is eternal life, welling up into us even now, pointing us towards the future, the empty tomb, that which we are about to celebrate next week during Holy Week. For Jesus Christ has been sacrificed for your transgressions and mine. And if he has given his own life, to defeat our death, then believe that he will continue to lead you, guide you, and strengthen you, even during a time such as this. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. May the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith, now and always, and grant you a peaceful and quiet night this night in Jesus Christ. Amen. We now sing the canticle, the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul implies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My Glory be to 
the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. We continue with the litany as we speak it. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Matthew, our synodical president, for Timothy, our district president, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all people, that they be kept in the faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Donald Trump, for all public servants, for the government, and those who protect us, especially during this time of the coronavirus outbreak, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, and given wisdom to rule the best according to God's will. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy, for those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place and at this time. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy, for those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all people who are here present and who are listening, who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoice in the fellowship of all the saints. Let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. We conclude with hymn 890, 890, which is, O blessed light, O Trinity, and may this final hymn be that which gives us peace as we get ready to go to sleep tonight. Oh, blessed light, oh, Trinity, 
Oh.